Uh, okay, so here it is. Here's what I've had a go at. I want you to have a read of this. And as you have a read of it, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. Red. Quotes in red, please. Green. Authorial intent. Uh, let's go. Aqua. And aqua will be uh, literary techniques. And let's go one more. I'll do nice orange because I used to have orange hair, but now it's faded. Uh, I'll do one more, which is articulate language. Articulate language means language that is, uh, I guess, a bit more formal, a bit more fancy. Okay, so if you go through this, you'll find that it's not hard to um, map this out. And this is a great technique for editing your own work. One of the things that, that students find difficult is they'll say, I don't know how good my own work is. And let's be honest, if you're an English teacher and you've got 25, 28 kids in your class, reading all of their work is, is incredibly onerous. So we'll start with uh, quotes, really, really easy. Have I missed any here, guys? Come on. Okay, so what do you notice about my quotes? Hopefully your answer will be that they're actually really quite concise. They're short, okay? So I've used short, concise quotes, okay? Can a quote be one word? Yes, it can, but please make sure the word is uh, you know, a useful word. You wouldn't want to say, um, for example, um, Lizzie got mud on her shoes. I mean, there's no real point to that, if you know what I mean. So they're, they're short, concise quotes. You can actually include quotes in different ways. Uh, I am a fan of the old bracket, okay? So if I want to put a quote in quickly, but I don't necessarily have a lot of time for transitional words to, to uh, sort of introduce it, I might use quotes uh, in brackets, okay? If I've got a really long quote, uh, that I, I, I can't keep the whole quote in there, I might use ellipses, okay? This is to shorten quote, okay? Okay, so now let's have a look at my authorial intent. Where do I talk about the author, Austin? So I'm going through and I'm looking for the word Austin. Austin suggests something, okay? Austin, let's see if I got it again. From the outset, Austin uses, okay? So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show the reader that I understand that this is a construction, that the author has written this for a particular uh, purpose and reason. They're making choices, okay? So have I missed another one here? Nope, okay. Next thing I've done is I've done a range of literary techniques, and this is a cracker. I love this book because there are so many literary techniques. So we start with an emphatic statement, okay? That is a um, literary technique, caricature, okay? So you've got this satirising, this caricature of Mrs uh, Bennett and it serves to ridicule women who are so over the top about this kind of stuff, okay? Uh, dialogue is another technique. What else do we see here? Oh, hang on. I just dissed myself over here, Austin Challenges. Okay, so I'll go back now to literary techniques. Okay. Okay, contrast is a literary technique or sometimes it's called a juxtaposition. So sometimes that's called a juxtaposition. So we see this contrast between Lizzie and Jane. Okay. Uh, I've got inferences here. Let's have a look. Oh, look at this. This is, also, this is uh, the narrator. I'm understanding that that's third-person narration here. That's a technique, okay? Let's have a look. Um, I've talked about the effect on the reader here, so that is uh, an authorial intent. It induces sympathy amongst readers, okay? So if we go through this and have a read of it, 
uh, there's a range of things here that it does to keep going back and addressing Mrs Bennett. The novel's opening quote reflects prevailing social attitudes. I'm starting out broad. This isn't just about Mrs Bennett, line seven. Thank you. Let me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you already picked me up. Oh, good on you, Albert. Um, have a look at how it's written, okay? Really, Mrs Bennett, it's not about Mrs Bennett. It's about what Mrs Bennett reveals about broader society, okay? So things like, uh, I'll use my fancy words, articulate language, extols. Isn't that a great word? So it's about Mrs Bennett extolling these values. And these values aren't all her fault because women do have limited opportunity uh, for any form of economic uh, freedom or liberty, okay? So from the outset, Austen uses caricature to ridicule the preoccupation of many women. Now, look how I've done that. Why do you think I've put that in a uh, in uh, inverted commas? It's most women, but it's not all of them. So I just want to say many women and their families with marrying well, okay? And I'm suggesting that the response of some people to this notion of desperation to be married is hysteria, okay? In the passage, directly answering the question, Mrs Bennett is entirely defined through her dialogue with Mr Bennett. Now, how interesting. Mrs Bennett is characterised as this funny, ridiculous, hysterical person, but she's only ever seen as the wife, as the mother. So her characterization reflects the lower status of women at the time, okay? And what does he do? I mean, when you think about it, it looks funny, but it's a bit mean, really. He persistently mocks his wife, okay? He, he actually withholds information and teases her about it. And there's something not nice about it. There's something misogynist about it, okay? I've said here, uh, and he derides his daughters, because he's putting them down too. Uh, he, he derides his daughters as silly and ignorant like other girls, okay? What we see here is we see that uh, he um, appreciates, as do many men, um, uh, women who are beautiful. They're more marriageable. And he likes Lizzie because she's more spirited because he's been living with his wife, Mrs Bennett, who is not particularly, uh, you know, a, an intellect, Okay. So his preference for his daughter, Lizzie, suggests he now values intellect in a woman. Indeed, I love that word, I use it a lot. Indeed, the other word I use is specifically great lead-in word to say, I'm going to continue with this, I'm going to take you further. It's an analytic term. The narrator highlights that 23 years of marriage had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. Okay, and that Mrs. Bennett, Bennett was of mean understanding and little um, uh, information. Mean here means little. She's dumb. That's what they're saying. Okay, instead she was driven by visiting and news, and she perceived herself as nervous when she was really just unhappy. Okay, she kept saying, "Oh, you're on my nerves," when she was just worried. Okay, so can you see here? There's a range of things that are going to be, I guess, hallmarks of analytic writing. And this is the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about later this week. It's one thing for me to show you how to write an essay in terms of the structure. What's more important or equally, okay, I'll be honest, equally import, as important is being able to write at a deeper level, okay? So start with your characters. Write, uh, read a passage uh, about Mr Collins and write uh, an analysis of Mr Collins. Uh, read a passage, um, if you like, go and analyse that dialogue between Lizzie and Darcy when he proposes. I mean, it's, it's fabulous stuff and you can actually really get into uh, the themes that emerge here. Now, I haven't really even overtly or really explicitly talked about themes in here. But if you have a read of this, what themes do you think are evident in my response? Let's have a look in the chat function. Well, I can think of quite a few, my friends. What themes are evident? Okay, I can think of gender. I can think of um, social hierarchy or family relationships. I can look at the, the notion of uh, marriage as an 
economic contract. I can look at possible misogyny, which is related to gender, of course. Uh, so there's a whole range of things about uh, social um, values and expectations of women and the avenues that are open to them, which I think is, is really important.